Good afternoon. Today we're going to walk through a tutorial of installing Lucene on a local machine, uh, specifically Windows. Uh, we're going to step through this, run a Java application on top of Lucene to get back some results and uh, just kind of dissect how Lucene works in general. Um, so the first step here is going to be to download Lucene for Windows. Uh, you can go to this link that's listed here. I'll put that in the description. Uh, Lucene currently has more updated versions. However, we're going to be using 3.6.2, which covers, some again, some of the basics. Uh, after looking through the code, it looks like there are one or two deprecated methods, uh, but it, it should be an easy fix once you have this up and running to get it to the up-to-date version. Uh, so once we... Uh, so we can, again, we can navigate here uh, and download the zip file specifically for Windows. Once you've downloaded that, go ahead and extract it. And then move the extracted file, Lucene 3.6.2, into your C drive. Um, it's important to have it set up this way, as, as in the application we have the local path set to this. So you'll see in here uh, the basic Lucene files. Uh, we'll also need to create two additional files here called product data and product index. So you have to, excuse me, I'm jumping around, around a little bit in the instructions here. But basically we need to create these and this will be the data that our uh, index uh, will be built off of. So take a look here. So you create, again, the file product data. Then you put a couple text files in there. These are just test text files. Uh, I actually went on to Amazon.com and typed in the keyword laptop and simply copied and pasted some of the basic features of a couple of laptops. So again, same thing here, giving us the basic stats. and then create your product index file. As you can see, we've already run through this once before we have the files. These will be generated by Lucene, so those are, you do not need to create those. So next, we will step through actually creating the application. Uh, as you can see, it lists in the prerequisites. You need a locally installed version of Lucene. We just step through the basics of that. It's literally just a download, extract, and then put it into your C drive. And then we've also created the uh, folders necessary for putting the data and uh, where the index output is going to go. Next, we'll just create a new project in Eclipse. So we'll go ahead and open this up here. You can see we already have the project uh, created. It is a simple Java product project. So file, new, project, and you click Java, Java project and follow the steps. Now from there, we create a package here, com.lucene.fuzzy, because this will be a fuzzy search. And that would just be new package. And then we would go about creating each of these individual Java classes. So new class. Now once you have these created, they will be empty. So let me show you here. This is simply when you create these, it will look like this. It will show that it's in the package and it will give you the basic uh, class instantiation. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, this is a prepared code uh, that was generated by the ISM class uh, of the MBA program at USF and the Masters of Data Science. So the Lucene Constants class is just and the test file filter class are just basic classes that, uh, that handle so the Lucene Constants uh, provides the file path uh, to the files that we just created and the text filter is specifically looking for a text document. So while so these are um, just additional files to ensure we've got the proper input and output locations. So you would copy and paste the code from here. Into here. 
like we had. So if you can copy and paste, we've got the exact same thing there. And the same thing with the text file filter class. Perfect. Same thing. And then you can go through. Uh, the next is the indexer class. So this is the class uh, because uh, the way the search works it is a inverse index. Um, so what it is doing is taking the documents and then recording the keywords in the different locations. Um, so when you uh, utilize this, it is looking up uh, the really the loca location of the document or the keyword in the document. So the indexer class is the first step uh, in the search process is going to index the document specific to how Lucene wants to see the index. So we copy and paste this code. And as you can see, we have it right here. So I'll scroll through that just so you can see all of it here. There we go. Next we have the searcher class. And again, we're just going to copy and paste this. Um, the idea of the searcher class is that it's going to be performing the actual search um, and computing the vector difference. Um, so it's going to be looking at uh, how far apart these different items are in terms of similarity. Uh, and we'll see that in the readout. Their score uh, will be produced, uh, which gives us an idea of how uh, similar the term is to, uh, or how, how likely it is to match into the document and give us what we're looking for. So that is your searcher class, and again, just copy and paste, and I'll scroll through this also so you have a complete view here. Okay. And then next we have our main class, which is Lucene Tester. So again, we're going to copy and paste here um, what this is set up to do. Is it's going to you manually set the path name here and the data directory. Uh, then you create an indexer and a searcher like we just described, so we're going to be using these two classes we just made. And the Lucene Tester, which is our class here. Uh, so then we're going to run through, we're going to create the index, as you can see here. Lucene Tester, create index. And it's going to request that we input a search term. And we have the new buffer reader so it's going to read that in, run it through a couple try catches to make sure we got the right thing, split it into an array, and then search. Uh, the way it's going to work is if we have a multi-word search, it's going to split it into an array and search for each individual word, and then give us the resulting return, uh, give us resulting score for each word and the documents that it was found in. So you see down here we have the methods that we call. And again, just scrolling down through here to give you a full view of all of the code. So let's go ahead and let's continue through here. Make sure, yep, it looks like and we, we did this step a little bit in advance here. Uh, but this is, again, just creating uh, the product data and the product index file. And now we're ready to run our first search. So you can simply click the run. Uh, always save resources before launching. So you can see here it read in our product text files. Five files have been indexed and it took about 80 milliseconds. Now it's asking, it's requesting we put a search term. And because these were laptop products, 
uh, I'm going to and say I wanted a battery to last me nine hours. And I'll just put nine. So as, like I said, it breaks it down into two different words here. We have battery and nine. And for the first one, we have three documents that were found with 34 milliseconds. And it gave us a score that was the same for each of these documents, which means they, it found the pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, which would make sense because we could just copied and pasted the, or the specifications for each laptop uh, into those tech, doc text documents. Now, the more interesting result to us here would be Word 2, which is 9. And as you can see, one document was found with the, uh, or with the number 9 in it, uh, giving us a higher score uh, because it was the only document. So I believe in uh, when we're running through a uh, TF IDF model, the IDF inverse document frequency uh, it tells us how rare uh, something is. So this would be an example of, or somewhat of an example of that, where we have something uh, that is more unique and more rare than this first word, which gives us uh, would give us a higher return. Now, mind you, I, I do not believe this is an implementation of TF IDF, but uh, that's just a good example if you're starting to look into different forms of searching. So these are the, the this is some of the final information here that we have at the bottom of the document. Uh, we'll go ahead and just read through this because it's uh, good to understand these concepts. So indexing is a process of one or more of the core functionalities provided by Lucene. Um, so as you can see in this index or in this diagram here, we have the documents, and each document is basically a, a bucket with a bunch of words. So we have each field in here. The analyzer looks uh, at each field and then writes it to the index, which is our directory. So it's, you think of it as the yellow pages, how the search is able to look it up. Um, so we add the, the documents containing the fields, and the index writer analyzes documents. And analyzes, creates, and opens index and stores each in, in a directory. But again, it won't hurt to say that Lucene uses an inverted index. So as an index uh, technique, a dictionary of each word is uh, occurring in all documents is made. Each word information about the word occurs is stored to something similar to this. So as you can see, we have cosine is in document one, four, and seven. So it's got the black arrows here pointing. That's what we were talking about earlier, is that we have this inverted index. And so then we have pack, and pack only shows up in one of the documents. And then ship also shows up in one of the documents, document number four. So that ends our basic tutorial with Lucene and a very basic Java application. Thank you for watching.